So I'm going to use a lot of E&E &E news clips uh, in my videos. And I just want to make it clear why I use E&E &E news clips the way I do uh, for Fukushima's. But they cover all kinds of nuclear subjects and accidents. If I go to the Daily Mail for Fukushima stories, I'm barbarized with Hollywood skanks and tits and ass and the soapbox fantasy lives where the elite have to attempt suicide just to get noticed anymore. And if I go to the Huffington Post, it's a bimbo on a stick that tricks celebrities to write idiotic, insignificant, useless blogs for free so they can drag in people to be indoctrinated into hating Muslims. And they got the credibility of an old worn out shoelace and they're always pushing that never ending inbreeding royal mood swings we're so sick of. If I go to the New York Times, I'm listening to Israeli think tanks talking puppets saying Iran is a threat to all life on Earth. It's going to make a nuclear bomb if we don't bomb them now. They never mentioned the USA has 49 bases on Iran's borders that are full of nuclear bombs to shut Israel up. And Iran is a caged butterfly. But the noise means the lobbyists can keep the 49 military bases fully stocked and funded, and that's how the lobbyists gets paid. And that's how Israel, the fourth biggest weapons producer on Earth, can sell a few billion dollars worth of weapons that probably don't even exist. But the E&E news page is really no different than Drudge Report. It links you to all the same media. But E&E news only aggregates nuclear topics. Each page also has tons of links and they will all link you to mainstream media. So it's a convenient place, well thought out, and the original is just a hyperlink away. It's useful. Sellafield, England was a topic, and so when I click on that, I get mainstream media. The story is about the United Kingdom's MOX fuel facility in Sellafield. And I want you to think about it's like Fukushima. Uh, and I can tell you why it's dangerous. Uh, not only because of the radiation, because of the way that radiation actually works. And so if you look at what happened down there, there were 600 people lost their jobs, and it was a mixed oxide fuel plant. It's a nice way of saying that it's hell on earth. And the closure is a consequence of the Fukushima accident, they call it an incident in Japan in March of that year, which had closed down much of the nuclear industry there, and they have to rethink nuclear power around the world. It's an interesting statement from back then to pacify the people that were angry. And they have every right to be. You can see Greenland is affected, Norway, Sellafield, the entire British Isles, is affected by a creature that is hemorrhaging out at 8 million liters a day. This is a very uh, big plume all on its own. So at 8 million liters a day every day, think of going out and sinking container ships every day in the ocean full of nuclear waste. And they're not in containers, it just floods right out of the hole of the boat you sank every single day. Does that make any sense to anybody? Is that what they're supposed to be doing? No. And not only that, but they've had cracked pipes down there where there's 20 tons of uranium and plutonium that had aerosoled and made its way out through a, they call it a cracked pipe, but they actually vented that. Put that into perspective, a gram of this stuff aerosoled is more uh, radio atoms than all the grains of sands on all the beaches on the planet. And here's 20 tons of it aerosoled and went out to the environment. And they hid that away. They never tried to do their job the whole way through. Uh, they just pour it on the ground anyway. But it's in your Pacific Ocean from Fukushima, but it's also happening to England. And that's so important because the way that uh, the alpha particle works it's traveling at 16,000 kilometers when it's ejected. Now, you, a lot of people think about global warming as actual something they can see on a temperature, but these particles are measured by the speed that they make molecules move, which is what heating water does, but this is a whole different ball game. 
and this is on the nuclear level. Then you have beta particles at 270,000 kilometers at the speed of light, and the gamma rays are flying out at 299,000 kilometers an hour. And so when you look at that in the ocean, you have to consider that's energy, and it just keeps doing that every second. A Beckwell is a second. So when I say 925 quadrillion, with an R, that's a thousand million million disintegrations per second, that's every second uh, for thousands of years going on in the ocean of those gammas, betas, and alphas. And when I say hot radioactive particles in Seattle, up on E and E News, that's just linking over to mainstream, you know, the, the equivalent of the mainstream sources. Uh, even though they might be small, they might be a university or an institution, and a lot of the times they're Harvard, and Yale, and Berkeley. But these 50% of the levels seen in Tokyo, this is in 2011 in June, they latch onto the lung tissues, and they were found in Seattle, folks. And when I say numbers like 166 million Beckwells per square meter, per square meter, that's smaller than your kitchen table of radioactive iodine. And cesium at 21 million Beckwells per disintegrations, that doesn't stop for the lifetime of the cesium every second. And when it comes to stuff like the iodine, they never even put a, a name with that one. Um, but this is four kilometers from Fukushima plant. So for those numbers to be there in August meant there had to be some really hot stuff, uh, you know, that got washed with the tsunami and deposited in that area. And that's not going to go away. So they don't mention the plutonium or, or uraniums, which will live for 4.5 billion years, but they identified them. So if you got one, you have to have the other at those numbers. Let me keep going for you. When I say 40,000 Beckwells of iodine 131, in a kelp bed off Southern California, it's got an eight-day half-life, 40 billion Beckwells per second. But that eight-day half-life is actually around 45 days long because it turns into another radioisotope as it changes. They don't tell you about that stuff. Now, that's an extraordinary, unbelievable, inconceivable number in kelp folks uh, you know on your coastline and that's because uh, you know April 16th the forecast showed radioactive clouds from Texas to Canada this was uh, April of 15 2011 and when I show you that these astronomical numbers like 1.4 trillion or billion Beckles a kilogram of the cobalt 60 what about the plutonium and uranium being deposited and reconcentrated far away? And, and the isotopes, they transfer to land with sea spray or aerosol, with flooding, uh, with rain, with uh, hurricanes and typhoons. And uh, you breed that stuff in. Fukushima radiation will be entering the Pacific Ocean for decades. There's no end in sight. And nobody has a solution. That's a staggering statement for 2013, just last month, folks. It's a very high concentration of hot particles in the Pacific Northwest during April. That's plutonium and americium. Plutonium's not going anywhere. This uh, 360 plus atoms of radioactive sulfur were inhaled in California. So you think about all that iodine, you can think about people were inhaling 360 atoms, radioactive atoms, a gram of cesium, a gram of strontium, a gram of uranium, a gram of plutonium is producing you know, the same amount of all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet. Each one of them are capable of that per gram. And we've had those four hydrogen explosions. We think one was a detonation according to what we learn. But that's a staggering number. 360 plus atoms in California, folks. And you can see the government's uh, release now. 
This was a hidden animation that shows the ocean all on the U.S. and the West Coast. Uh, hammered. Hammered! By the end of March 2011. And uranium-234 was detected in Hawaii. That's the weaponized uranium. Right? That's that little tiny amount of uh, enriched uranium. But the 99% left over is at 238. And there was a lot on that site that got washed away with the tsunami, by the way. Uh, 1,501 atoms of radioactive sulfur per meter. These are the buckyballs. I got a link below to those. These are extraordinarily dangerous. Uh, think of a buckyball where it got 60 joints, like a, like a soccer ball. And in the center of it is this little tiny engine of uh, uranium or strontium, plutonium. And so it can live for billions of years. And if you ingest it, and a lot of people did, it's guaranteed to give you cancer. As it looks right now from these numbers and everything you're seeing right here right now, everybody in the Pacific Northwest, for sure, and on the Pacific coastlines of North America, got cancer in the next few years coming at them. That's a fact. It's a fact. And the fact is, they knew all of this, as I'm showing you right now, and they turned it into a state secret. A secret. Right? They hid this away on purpose. They turned it into a state secret so nobody was allowed to reveal what they were finding. That's a fact. And they knew back then, see, in 2011, that the Krypton-85 was detected uh, in samples from Reactor 2. But this was the burning off of the rods were burning off because the poles went dry. That's basically what that added up to. But you can't deny what you're looking at. You know, when Krypton goes up, 85 went up 14,000% in one day at Reactor 2. Uh, that was a plutonium separation. And so that's why you had all those numbers off California and Hawaii and Seattle and British Columbia and the entire coastline, Alaska, and the entire Pacific Rim got hammered with this, folks. This went up to the jet streams. Radioactive water reached 3,200 kilometers off the east of Fukushima six months ago. That was September the 18th, so six months before September the 18th, 2012, radioactive water had already reached 3,200 kilometers. And just absolutely staggering that uh, plutonium will no longer be measured. It's impossible to, for a normal person to detect with a Geiger counter. Over 30 million tons of nuclear waste, 30 million tons, and this stuff is smoking, sitting there, piled up in debris, and it's got hot particles in it. And so it got all these other metals and all these other minerals around it, and it goes into its own little nuclear fission, its own little nuclear engine. And so this stuff is smoking and releasing all kinds of radioisotopes as it is. It's just an endless 30 million tons uh, from the tsunami, see, of all that stuff that got washed all over the place with the explosions, with the uh, releases, with the burn-offs, with the pools going dry. And no wonder they spent 12 million yen to censor Twitter, you know, when they started to burn the debris. But the uh, plutonium was found concentrated by 26,000 times, 26,000 times far out at sea. We have to owe up to our responsibility to the 8 million other species on this planet, not only the human species, but the 8 million other species we have identified. We're going to lose everything in the Pacific no matter what we do, because uh, there's no way if we all jumped on it today, we still can't stop the damage they're done. that's done. But let's start, folks. Let's try, everybody. Let's put our backs to the wall and pretend we've got a great big meteorite coming towards us and that we have to solve this issue, because that's exactly what's happening to us.